May your struggle keep you near the cross. And may your troubles show that you need God. And may your battles in the way they should. And may your Good day to you all. We are so blessed to join another day sharing our lesson for today, Praying Down Walls. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so happy, we are so thankful for the opportunity to meet in this fashion, to review your words and to be encouraged by the nuggets that we shall find in it father we pray that whatever lessons are learned we will apply them to our lives so that we can be closer drawn to you and have a greater and deeper understanding of who you are we give you thanks in jesus name amen so let's jump straight into it praying down walls hmm there's an expression in English to be painted into a corner. Imagine painting the floor of a room, but realizing that you wound up in a corner and cannot get out, except by walking over the fresh paint. You have to stay there until it dries. And in construction, it really shows that you are not thinking about the process if you paint yourself into a corner. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's a way of expressing that you have not thought about the circumstances in such a way that you have a way to get out. Proper planning was not done. Mm -hmm. These circumstances are distressing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe when we looked at uh, crucibles of sin, mm -hmm. your own actions mm -hmm. could have set you into a corner mm -hmm. and you have no escape but to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. You have painted yourself into a corner mm -hmm. sometimes our faith seems to paint us into a corner we arrive at a situation and like the wet paint on the floor our faith traps us mm -hmm. this is interesting that your faith can trap you mm -hmm. uh, we look at the situation and either we have to reject god faith and everything we believe in or our faith compels us to believe what appears to be Impossible. Impossible. Any any such scenarios come to your mind? Of course. And we spoke about some of them um, in reviewing these lessons. Uh, you have a child, for example, to send to school. Um, the tuition cost is, is, is extremely high. You don't earn that money. You have just probably a fraction of it. Mm -hmm. And you cannot believe or figure out where you will get this sum of money from to send this child to school. Or perhaps, um, like mentioned earlier, you don't have any money for food. You really don't see where it is going to. The cupboards are empty. Mm. Only water mm -hmm. that is in the tap is there to mm. boil like a tea and probably you don't even have the sugar to go in and you see absolutely nowhere it's not even pay day pay a month or pay a week you see absolutely no way of being provided for um again somebody who is ill doctor has given over on them and you know there is absolutely no way they see a healing coming interesting I was also thinking of situations like, you know, the one you mentioned about not, not having a job, somebody coming to you and say, hey, work on Sabbath and, you know, you, you'll, you'll have a job. Your faith puts you into a corner where you say, boy, hey, I'd love to have this job, but this is not something that I can do based on, on my faith. So in these scenarios that were previously mentioned, you have faith but your faith is not strong enough to believe that god is going to come through um you believe that something will work out but you are not seeing your faith is not big enough it is not strong enough um you don't have that assurance in god that the five million dollar school fee 
God is going to provide. He'll provide probably $200,000 out of what is needed. You don't have the faith to believe that he will come through for the full amount that is required. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is how I see your faith trapping you. You're limiting yourself and you're limiting your understanding of God because your faith only takes you so far and no further. You're not believing God to deliver on the impossible. All right. Cool. God brought the Israelites to a corner. After they had wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, God did not lead his people to empty, peaceful grasslands. God led them to one of the most strongly fortified cities in the whole area. This is interesting because, remember, these were just slaves. They were not warriors, anything like that. They did not have military training. Then they had to walk around Jericho in silence for six days. On the seventh day, God told them to shout, and that shouting together with the trumpets would bring victory. From a military point of view, how does this even make sense? You shouting, you shouting outside going to bring walls down? No, not on my own. Okay, and you you know that there there are some people who believe that. Uh, the constant pounding of the the um, soldiers as they marched around mm-hmm. Israel loosened the um, boulders in the wall and that constant vibration day after day did this and whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Limiting the power of God. I, I, I don't think so. Discount, yeah. All right. So um, Joshua um, 5 verses, chapter 5, verses 13 to 6 verse 20 kind of gives us the backdrop here okay that's where the story is is um based it says question what is god trying to teach the israelites in this particular setup so we know that from a physics point of view this is not going to work mm-hmm. so what is he teaching them that they can't rely on their own strengths to mm-hmm. do anything they mm-hmm. have to rely on god's intervention it is only through God that they can accomplish anything at all. Mm. It says here, shouting loudly was not going to cause vibrations to trigger the wall to collapse. When God called the Israelites to shout, it was the same type of shouting that David writes about in Psalm 66, where he says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, sing the glory of his name, and make his praise glorious. This shouting was praise. After six days of looking at the huge walls, they must have concluded that they hadn't a chance of breaking them down themselves. Mm -hmm. Hmm? So they are brought to a position where (laughs) you're going to, as you say, you're, you're backed into a corner, my faith brings me to this point where I'm standing in front of the wall. Mm. Can I go further? Mm-mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, that's it. Mm-hmm. I'm just here standing in front of the wall. Mm-hmm. Is it possible that this thing that I don't understand will happen? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's, that's a, the, the point of the faith there. Now, how does this idea help us understand the meaning of Hebrews 11? 30 and it says in that text uh, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days right how how does that whole thing help us to understand that so it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the the marching no it wasn't the shouting. No, it wasn't, it wasn't, any, a, it wasn't any action except exercising faith. faith. Good. That was how the children of Israel were able to conquer uh, Jericho, you mm-hmm. know, by exercising their faith. It wasn't any action of their own. It wasn't the marching, as you said. It wasn't mm-hmm. the shouting. It wasn't the trumpet. It wasn't the fact that, you know, the ark necessarily was there, but because they exercised the faith that God was able to work through that faith in destroying Jericho. Good. So when God is on the verge of doing something new in our lives, he may bring us to a Jericho 
for he may need to teach us that the power to triumph does not come in our own strength and strategies. So you have the best plans. Okay? Everything we need comes from outside of ourselves. This one is difficult for us to um, accept. So no matter what is in front of us, no matter how insurmountable it may seem, our role is to praise God, the source of everything we need. And this is faith in action. Okay? Now, while reading this, talk about faith putting you into a corner. It came to me to go back to Hebrews 11. And in looking at it, I want to give you one, just one. Hebrews 11, uh, 17. By faith, Abraham when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise of offering, and he who had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. So how do we have a, situ a situation where, remember, no, you know, Isaac is, Ishmael was not the son of promise. It was Isaac that was the son of promise. And great nations were supposed to come from from Isaac, but yet still, God says to Abraham, "Sacrifice this the boy." Abraham is is sure that this is the voice of God. How those two things come together? It is impossible if the boy has been sacrificed mm -hmm. that the promise will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And for all this time. They have gotten uh, heavenly messengers and everything like that to tell you that this. And the Lord said to him, listen, uh, Ishmael will have many children. Yes, because, you know, this will, it, but that's not the one. Mm -hmm. He points to the stars and said, like the stars in heaven, that is the one, the, one, the, the promise. So how did sacrifice come? Well, again, by faith. So, mm -hmm. so, so, um, Abraham, regardless of whatever was was happening now, mm -hmm. he believed that God would still fulfill the promise. Watch God this. would make a way somehow. Good. Let's let's look at the way. Let's look at the way. So he says, um, so he continues now. Of whom was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called. Now listen to verse nineteen, concluding that God was able to raise him up from the dead, mm -hmm. from which. He also received him in a figurative sense. So, we like to think that resurrection is mm -hmm. something in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Not so. Mm -hmm. We have this, that people then believe that God could have raised mm -hmm. um, people from the dead. And we see it in, in uh, the story of, I think, Elisha um, there as well, right? But here it points to the idea mm -hmm. that, hey, even if I do this, mm -hmm. God still has the power. Mm -hmm. the, the person who said, let there be light, mm -hmm. the person who created all the living things would have had the power to reanimate, mm -hmm. to call back to life the son which had been sacrificed. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, that, to me... Is a strong one, still, you know, mm -hmm. because in in your uh, earthly you know, science and all of, it, I guess too, it goes back to a text that says, the things of this world are foolishness to to mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. right? And what makes sense here does not translate into anything meaningful mm -hmm. um, to the divine. Mm -hmm. Well, you know how I see it is is that you you really have to have that relationship with God, and know who God really is. So for Abraham, he knew the power of God. He knew God not just by hearing about Him. He had an experiential relationship with God, and and therefore he was able to exercise that faith that even if his son Isaac was taken from him at that moment. God would have wrought some miracle. God would have done something to um, allow that promise to be fulfilled. All right. Just uh, 
little bit now of our Ellen White notes and it says here at the end the 66th psalm and portions of the 68th and 72nd psalm were often sung by christ thus in the most simple and unassuming way he taught others would it not be well to cultivate gratitude and to offer grateful songs of thanksgiving to god as christians we ought to praise god more than we do we ought to bring more of the brightness of his love into our lives as by faith we look to jesus his joy and peace are reflected from the countenances how earnestly we should seek so to relate ourselves to god that our faces may reflect the sunshine of his love when our own souls are vivified by the holy spirit we can exert an uplifting influence upon others who know not the joy of Christ's presence. And this is taken from Ellen G. White's comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 3, page 1148. So again, that takes us to the end of our lesson for today. Remember, as we go through today, as we go through our week, let us approach life, let us approach the day with songs of praise. It is through songs of praise that we will be able to overcome some of the obstacles that we will face in this life. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Prove that God is good. Come on. May your hope, yeah.